Last summer, my friends and I decided to head to this abandoned theme park where we heard about online. It had been abandoned for a number of years, and nature had reclaimed most of it. It sounded like it would be difficult to get into, so we made sure we were prepared. We brought flashlights, ropes, and all sorts. There were three of us, including me. We were in the second year of university. We were pretty fearless, and it was summer break, and we were bored. And a bit naive. We finally arrived at the abandoned theme park, and it was about 1 a.m. We wanted to go at night, so cops wouldn't see us sneaking around. There were lots of rumors about the park. They say it got closed after too many ride-related accidents, some saying that a woman was pushed from the Ferris wheel after arguing with her boyfriend. Others say that a crazed mental escapee broke into the park and hid in the ghost house, and then he would attack guests one October night, and then he took his own life. Apparently, rides start by themselves at night even though the electricity has been long disconnected. You can hear a woman sobbing by the ferris wheel and voices screaming, It hurts! Coming from the ghost house. People say that these spirits haunt the park. And I was very skeptical and I thought these stories were nothing more than an urban legend. But my other two friends were believers in the paranormal. One decided to bring a video camera to see if we could catch any of the alleged paranormal activity. He was messing around with it on the drive up there filming us, filming out the window, filming the road basically just annoying us. My friend parked the car in the theme park's car parking lot, which was surprisingly still accessible. I guess someone had not locked the gates or it was being used by other businesses. There were no other cars in sight, and I asked my friends if they were ready, and we set off. We climbed through the hole in the chain link fence, trying our best not to cut ourselves in the barbed wire. Our torches scanned over the long, dormant rides. I have to say it was very creepy. The plastic clown statue's eyes glistening in the dark, etc. To me, it felt like a game. Like I was in Silent Hill or Resident Evil. I was praying that something wouldn't jump out. It was near silent in the park. Crickets were chirping and the trees were swaying in the light breeze. We crept inside the restaurant and it was completely trashed. All the windows were broken, and there was glass everywhere. We went from building to building, finding little more than graffiti and empty beer cans. It was a bit anticlimactic. Even the ghost house was so battered and broken, you could see through the holes in the wall. There was nothing particularly frightening about this park, apart from the idea that we were there alone. The creeping fear that there was maybe someone else in the park with us wouldn't go away. We didn't know why, but all we thought there was someone else in the park. So we were heading past the bathroom on the way to the hole in the fence to get back to the car, when one of my friends thought they heard something. It's nothing, I whispered. Wait, listen, my other friend said. There it was, the sound of glass crunching underfoot coming from the bathrooms. We weren't alone. We looked at one another and knew we had to go. We weren't ready to meet whoever was in the bathroom alone at 2 a.m. We moved as quickly and as silently as we could back to the car park. I didn't hear anyone follow us. We started to guess that it must have been some homeless guy in there or something. We got back to the car and sat there for a while, reviewing some of the footage that we had shot and chatting about what we had just seen. My friend who was the driver looks in his rearview mirror and goes silent. Guys, we need to go, he says as he starts the ignition. I spin around to see another car in the park start its ignition, too. My friend peels out of the car park, and this car follows us. It keeps its lights off and follows us. My friends are freaking out, and I don't know whether to speed up or try to lose them through multiple turns. The car behind us just stays right on our bumper, speeding up occasionally and then dropping back. Like the driver is goading us. Whoever was behind that wheel, I was sure that the park was with us. Maybe even in the bathroom. They just kept following us. The car had no license plates, and I could never get a good look at the driver's face. That was definitely the desired effect of the driver. Flashing their lights and then turning them off. I was sure that they wanted to give us a fright. They had achieved that because we were panicking in the car. The car continued to follow us for a solid hour, and then it just dropped off. 
there was no reason why. I guess it's because they lost interest in frightening us. That night we learned that the humans are far more terrifying than urban legends. When my brother and I were younger, our parents took us on an unforgettable trip to a theme park. The theme park has since closed, and I think incidents like the one I'm about to describe are most likely responsible for its shutdown. I think I was about eight or nine, and my brother was about four or five when this happened. It was summer vacation, and our parents promised us that if we were good during summer break, then before we would go back to school, they would take us to an amusement park. After many boring days and nights of good behavior, our promise was delivered. We all bundled into the car and headed for this amusement park. It wasn't Disney World or Fuji Q Highlands, it was a bit on the cheaper side, you know, and a bit more old school. I think the park was established in the 60s or something because it was the kind of park which still had the haunting clown murals everywhere, and those creepy robotic animatronics. Those two titans of terror would be enough these days to put me off wanting to go, but back in the 80s, those creepy clowns and glitchy animatronics were socially acceptable. I guess we've come a long way. So we finally get to the park a little later than my parents had hoped. There was the usual bickering on the car ride, and this had been intensified due to a flat tire and bad directions. I guess we got there at about 7 o'clock, and the park was set to close at 9. We would have all the next day to go to the park, but we were so eager to see something before we had to go to bed. We were staying in the park hotel, so we dumped our bags in the room, and we just headed straight down to the park as a family. We went in and there was the usual kind of thing, ferris wheels, roller coasters, bumper cars. Our parents pitched up at a picnic table and got themselves a couple of drinks and let us roam the park together. We went on the ferris wheel, and that was great, if not a little creaky. It gave us an aerial view of the park. There was a clown show kind of area, and one of the clowns was waving to us. We waved back, of course. Then the clown started making his way over to the ferris wheel as we descended. He greeted us as we got off at the bottom. It was great. We felt so special. He had big red diamonds painted over his eyes, a blue nose, and mad yellow hair. His white clown paint face glowed. The sun was beginning to set. Hi kids, you enjoying the park? Yes we are, we replied. He made some small talk, and then he asked us to play the honesty game. And if we answered all the questions honestly, we would get a prize. What's your favorite color? Are your parents here? Do you like soccer kids? Are you staying at the park hotel? What's your favorite ride here? What room number are you staying in? Which do you like the least, maths or science? Since we were young, we just answered all his questions honestly, and he was true to his word. He said that he would come and deliver a special ticket to our hotel room later, and that ticket would allow us to go on a special ride with him. But if we told anyone about the ticket, we wouldn't get to go on the ride. And we could barely contain our excitement. We agreed, and he said he would go and let our parents know about it. Looking back on that, we missed several red flags. I mean, remembering this now is quite traumatic. After an hour or so, the park put out a message over the speaker system, stating that it would be closing shortly. Our parents rounded us up, we had our dinner, and we went back to the room. We whispered to each other about our special ticket coming later. Giddy with excitement. My parents said that they would be heading downstairs to the hotel bar, and they put on a movie for us, and told us to stay in bed and keep the door locked. We couldn't focus on the movie, we just sat up in bed staring at the door waiting for the clown to collect us for our special ride. After about 20 minutes of our parents leaving, we heard knocking at the door. I pushed a chair over to the door to look out of the peephole to see who was there. I saw a man out there. I was so disappointed that it wasn't the clown. I quietly climbed back down from the chair and told my brother. The man outside knocked the door again. We ignored it. Then he spoke. Kids, don't you want to go on your super secret ride? It was the clown's voice. But when I looked out of the peephole a few seconds ago, it was just a man, I thought. Something wasn't right. Hurry kids, you'll miss your chance. He called. My brother began to put on his shoes. I grabbed his arm. This was wrong. I didn't like this. I called back, no. 
I mean, it was all I had. I just instinctively knew that the door should remain shut. He wasn't the clown anymore. Open the door, he said, dropping his clown voice. My brother began to whimper. I said nothing. Open the door now, or you'll be in so much trouble. My brother pulled on my sleeve and ushered me towards the bathroom. I could hear the man outside fiddling with the lock, knocking and muttering. His voice was getting angrier. We locked ourselves in the bathroom. He hammered on the door. He was shouting. Then the room fell silent. About ten minutes passed and we heard the door open. Silent tears were rolling down my brother's face and mine as I held my hand over his mouth to muffle his screams. Where are they? I heard my mum call, and relief washed over us. We told our parents about what had happened, and they thought we had just watched the scary film or had a bad dream. We couldn't convince them of the fact that we just had a near miss. Years later, the park was shut down, and I hope to God nothing bad happened to anyone else, and it just went out of business. This happened when I went to a theme park in Nagasaki with three friends. The sun set in the blink of an eye. We were having a great time riding on various attractions, eating, and enjoying the illumination lights. It had rained, and it was a little damp, but overall it was great. We moved towards an attraction inside the palace. There was a huge line of people waiting to get in. Since I had guessed that we would be waiting for a while, I took a chance to go to the bathroom. When I came back, I couldn't find my friends anywhere, since the line had seemed to have doubled. I called to one of my friends, and they answered straight away. Sorry, where are you guys? I heard my friend's side of the call, and it sounded really noisy, like they were in a crowd of people. Can you raise your arm so I can see you? I asked. Yes, come find us, she replied through the intermittent static. I hung up, and I tried to find a bit of free space in the crowd just to make it easier for my friends to find me. However, I didn't see any of my friends, or any of their arms up. I gave them a call back. Hey, sorry, I can't find you yet. Have you still got your arm up in the air? There in the crowd, I saw an arm raise up. I pushed through the crowd to get to them, but then when I reached the place that I thought they were, I couldn't find them. Someone else had their arm up. I was about to call them back when I saw someone with their arm up in the small grove of trees behind the crowd. I wondered as I grew closer to them, why they had chosen such a strange place to wait for me. I saw my three friends beckoning to me in the wooded area. I started to speed up to reach them. They were proceeding into the tree line. Just as I was about to start jogging, I felt a hand land on my shoulder. Where are you going? One of my friends asked. Where have you been? She asked. I didn't know what was happening. They had just been waving me over to the trees, yet... Now they were in front of me. I turned back to the trees and no one was there. I told my friends about what I had just experienced. I pointed out that I'd even spoken to one of them over the phone, but they just stared at me in confusion. They even showed me their call history. If I hadn't spoken with any of them, then who did I speak to? Who were the people calling me to the woods? I was so confused. I couldn't enjoy the rest of our time at the theme park. I couldn't get what just happened to me out of my head. Since the park was so big, we decided to take a boat ride back to the entrance. Taking in some of the illumination and scenery should have calmed me down a bit. But it didn't. Something else happened. As we were going down to the canal in our boat, there was a bridge up ahead, and there were four figures that stood on the bridge. I can remember it so clearly. I saw all four of us on that bridge. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I turned to my friends to see if they were as in shock as I was, but it was as if they couldn't see them. I looked back at them at the bridge. This time I couldn't turn away. 
I felt as if I was frozen in time. Those doppelgangers, they just stared back at me. And then they grinned. Our boat went under the bridge, and I turned around to get another look at them. But when we came out on the other side, it had disappeared. I have no idea if this was some sort of glitch in the Matrix, or if I was looking into a parallel universe or something. I just remember how horrifying the whole experience was to me. It was uncanny, and I often see those doppelgangers when I shut my eyes. Was something calling to me? I will update if anything else happens. This happened when I was in the early years of high school, right in the middle of summer. All my homework and chores had been done, and I had the rest of the holidays ahead of me. One day I was doing nothing much at home, and my friend called to say that he was free as well. He invited me to a nearby theme park. I said that it sounded like a great idea, and I'd be there. I was really excited. My friend said he would be over shortly, so I got changed, and there was a knock at the door. The weather was gorgeous. I got in his mum's car, and we drove off. We arrived at the theme park. My friend wanted to get on the roller coaster right away. I was like, so soon? Don't you want to build up to it? He couldn't be swayed. The roller coaster was a little more intense than I hoped for. It shook me up a bit. Before you laugh, I was only young. He wanted to go on another G-Force mega thrill ride, and I wanted to take it a little easier. So I suggested we try another ride. The Ferris wheel looked pretty safe and free. It only took about five minutes to line up for it. The guy who was running the ride was really nice, and he made sure we were all set up and ready to ride. We boarded our carriage and began our ascent. There was a nice breeze. I could see the sea, and the birds flying in the distance. It was really great. Sometimes of all the new rides, you forget how good the classics are, and it was a real nice change of pace. The gondola in front of us and the one behind us were empty. Of course, my pal was shaking the gondola to try and make it feel more like a roller coaster. I told him to quit it, and he did. We were approaching the top of the wheel. We got this sweet panoramic view of the park and the beach. My friend gasped suddenly. He stopped all his fidgeting and jigging about. No way, he muttered. I followed his eyeline, and he was staring at the gondola behind us. The one behind us was empty, I was sure of it. But now there was a girl, about our age, riding in it. She was just staring at us. It was the strangest thing. Soon our gondola dipped into the three o'clock position, and we couldn't see her any longer. We got off at the bottom, and the guy who was running the ride must have noticed our expressions. Expressions that he had no doubt seen before, because he asked us almost immediately. Ha! I guess you saw her then. My friend and I couldn't muster up any form of response. She's always riding the Ferris wheels, boys. He said as he smirked. I really wish I was a couple of years older, or a little more confident back then, because I would have asked him some questions. She was pale, and we only saw her for a couple of seconds. I often think about that moment. 